Hey, what's up, everybody? We back at it again. Um, Alex, Alex had a midlife crisis this week. Uh, <laughs> it's the first time he ever he ever went under contract for a property, and he had to cancel. I mean, you know, it's been times where the seller made it canceled or something like that, but this is the first time Alex had to pull out of a deal. So we're gonna run through that, you know. So like, like we said, we make mistakes just like everybody else makes mistakes. I'm not saying Alex made a mistake, just. Those things happen. It's the real estate game. Uh, it's going to be nuances and things like that. But Alice, it's your first time. So let's just talk through it. I'll ask some questions and you just give me the feedback on what happened and we can go from there. All right. So first up, uh, so I'm taking you with, you found a property, you liked the deal and you went for it. Yeah. Right? So what was the, what was the determining factor to be like, okay, this ain't going to work really the the sole determining factor was just i couldn't find property management to manage that property right and then uh of course people will say well why don't you manage yourself start being lazy yeah so this one was i'm used to having prop like i guess self-management self-management the furthest property that i manage myself is four hours away mm -hmm. And even in that case, it's in a town that's, uh, well, for one, I, I, I've been there several times. Um, so I kind of know the area and then it's closer to a bigger town. So there's a lot more, it's closer to, it's, it's close to a couple big towns. So it's easier to get contractors, plumbers, whatever you need to go out there and do things. Um, this one is that I was looking at is seven hours away. And the biggest town next to it, there's only one, and they don't want to go to that town because it's in a different county and for some other reasons we'll get into. Yeah, and and for people to understand, especially when you play in the real estate game, it's, it's not just, hey, I found a good deal. And especially if you're, uh, if the property is, you know, a certain distance away, you know, seven, eight hours away that you have, it's not about just finding a good deal. Yeah, you can find a good deal, but you could be in a, a county that's very uh, tenant friendly and not landlord friendly. I mean, you can find the the key is the and one of the elements of having a property management, especially when it's remote, is the fact that the context is not is not just oh only thing they're gonna do is just collect money and collect money on your property it's the context that they have if something happened they know who to reach out to they know for the most part if they're good they know the best people to get stuff done they already have relationships and things in the area they know the uh, tenant pool and things like that of how things go so it's just more than just they're collecting your rent and listening to the phone calls from the tenants the relationships should build because this is what this is going to happen i can or alex can call up there to just some random roofing company some random plumber and then the random plumber could be terrible of course you can do google reviews but when you're so far away you don't know what's good what's bad you don't know you know the real history that maybe is not on google usually property managers know who the best are in the area if they're good and of course, and I, Alex, I remember I was talking back and forth about this. Is is I was like, find property management because Alex is like, I'm in there, I got the property, and I was like, all right, Alex, we got to find property management because I thought he was gonna manage himself like he does everything because Alex ain't trying to get nobody a dollar, y'all. So I, th I thought he was gonna manage himself, and then he said, no, he's looking for a property manager, and that was you know one of the headaches that I found, especially going remote, especially in other states, was the property management is key. The property management is huge and that that can make a break it could be a good deal when you buy it but then if the property manager stinks and they can't get tenants in there or they let the tenants run amok or they not performing at a high level and there's nobody in the area to perform at a high level you as the investor is gonna get crushed so property management is a key element but give us the rest of the rundown so how did the process go to get out of the deal did you get out of the deal what stage yeah. right now yeah, we're out of the deal. So the realtor actually like never sent the contract to the title company, which I found out 
later on. So the title company was like, well, we don't even have the contract. So we just need an email from the realtor so we could send your earnest money back. Um, so yeah, I got the earnest money back. We're out of the contract. Basically we're not going through with the deal, but, um, the one lesson I did learn was find property management before sending the earnest money. Cause that was a headache, you know, trying to just get my earnest money back when I could have just not sent it and not have that headache. So when I did call around for property management is when I realized, you know, it was it was tougher than I thought it was going to be to to find someone out there. And then when you did talk to the property managers, what did they say about that area? So I called around to like, I mean, literally it was like 10 different property managers and nine of them were out further away. But I was like, maybe there's a chance because I know sometimes some property managers will like push it to like a 30, 35 minute drive. But in this case, the nine that I called out there, either they weren't picking up their phone or the other half of them or whatever said that they don't go out to that area. And so my only resort was one left that was like the only property manager close to that town. It was about 15, 20 minutes away. And um, when I called, they actually... It was a lady that answered the desk. So it's not like you talk to the property manager themselves. So the lady at the desk was like, yeah, we'll give you a call back. And then that's when I started a call to the other property managers. And one of them knew the owner of the one I was trying to call that was close by and was like, hey, I'll contact him to give you a call. And then that's how I got the owner of that management company to call me. And then he was like, He's like, yeah, I know it's close by, but we don't go to that town because it's a different county. And he's like, they are way far behind. <laughs> he said, if there's any issue, you can't do anything online. You have to physically walk into the courthouse for everything. Sign papers takes up a lot of time. And then if there is an eviction that you have to go through, you have to post a certified mail three day notice. You can't just start day one, which I guess is how they do like like to do things in Georgia. It's like day one, you know, you need to get out or we're evicting you. So in that county, you have to actually have to do a three day notice before you can start the process. And so they're just very far behind. And then he said that contractors also don't like to go to that town because there's no hardware store there. So they have to leave the town to go get supplies and then come back and go back and forth. And they, they prefer not to do that. Yeah, and this and that right there is a uh, a thing that I want to pull out is time is important. Yeah, the property manager could have sit there and sold you a bill of goods and say, "Yeah, we'll do it," because they would have got your money. But they realized their time was more important than getting your money for all the stuff that they're gonna have to go through, all the hurdles that they're gonna have to jump to get it, get there to call contractors because they know contractors won't go there, so it's gonna be harder for them to find contractors and all that. Really. It impacts you and usually and i salute whoever this gentleman was for the company usually property managers don't do that the only thing they're thinking about is growing their portfolio yeah we can do it yeah we can do it yeah we'll do it and then you come out to find out they stink they 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 sound good and that's why we always talk about when you hire a property manager you're interviewing somebody for a job just because they got a title property manager that don't mean they know what the hell they're doing i mean anybody that's in mid-level management that ever had to interview people for a position, everybody sounds good. But then you get them in the door and you find out they're a dirtbag. And that's how it is with property management. So you got to go through your due diligence and you got to you got to survey them, you got to inspect them, you got to do due diligence on them just as you did with the property. And again, I salute that property manager for telling the, you know, giving the facts of the area, the dynamics, the situation of where that property is and didn't just say, oh no, we just take your money and then you can just deal with the problem later. And it will save you a lot of headaches in the future. So salute to him. Yeah, no, definitely. But I mean, all in all, normally I'm like, normally when I'm getting a property, I'm like, I just want to grab another in my portfolio. And But with this one, I didn't like, I could see the benefit and just like, just cancel it because it would have cost me so much more time and money in the long end if I just went with the property and got it and it would have been a headache. And then 
there's really no reason to buy a property if it's going to pretty much just be a liability to you. So in that case, it was, you know, I just canceled it and I moved on. But now, um, you know, I can look for, I can, now I can kind of thin down my search area, you know, like now I know that town's not good. Now I can, you kind of have to learn from not mistakes, but like where things don't work, you learn where you can improve or where you need to be searching for it rather than what you were looking for before. So now I can know where I need to be looking for as far as which cities, which towns, and, um, you know, stick to what I actually know, at least. All right. All right. Last question. Uh, so, so when you, when you realize that, that maybe this deal ain't gonna work, how did you feel just it, in yourself, what what would you say to yourself? I know you was talking to yourself. So what what was you thinking when you was like, this deal ain't gonna work? No, so literally, so when when uh I called the when I got the call from the property manager and he said we don't manage, I was like, shit. <laughs> I was like, so then I was like, that's it. And then so <clears throat> for everyone watching, my saving grace is Kirby's word. So I was like, all right, I got to call Kirby, see what he says. And Kirby was like, yeah, get the hell out of there. I was like, okay. So I was like, okay, this is a no-go. He's like, you need to call that lady back now and cancel. I was like, okay. So I was like, that's it. So at right there is when I knew I needed to cancel. But I mean, it's like, because <clears throat> I had to switch some funds around. Um, so, you know, I asked you, I was like, what do you think if I pull from my Roth, you know, money that I've contributed to the account? And so in that case, it actually gives me more capital now to look for a better deal. So, you know, before I just had money sitting in my brokerage and then I was considering pulling from the Roth for that deal. But now that I have more capital, now I'm kind of looking for like a better property, not a better property, but a maybe a deal that will cost a bit more rather than the budget range I was looking for, which if you don't know what you're looking for, can come with headaches like this one. So. Right. Yeah, no, no. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. With all that being said, guys, like, comment. I know people are going to be in there like the Roth IRA. You never should touch the money from there. But uh, we'll have another video about that. But Alex, they're going to barbecue you out there. So have fun with that. All right. Have a good one. Don't forget to subscribe. See you.